Well folks, I figure it's about time to get cracking on this four-wheel drive Gravely engine swap. April will be here before you know it, and so won't PA plow day, so I get a little bit of extra time on my hands. I got the heat on in the garage, so I figured we'd start in on this. Anyways, the plan for this tractor was to put an Onan CCKA on it and get rid of the K341 Kohler. So that way I'd have a little bit more power and twin cylinders are kind of neat. So I ended up having Hugh and Austin pick me up a CCKA from the early 60s that I'd found down in Pennsylvania when they took their last trip down there. And the only problems with that engine was it had a massive crankshaft on the back of it. It had the wrong oil pan and the wrong starter, so I'd have to change out all that stuff. So I had put the word out online for parts for that one, and I ended up coming up with this 16 and a half horse Onan that came off of a Gravely 816, and I only ended up trading a couple of Wisconsin-powered Gravelys for it. So <clears throat> I ended up getting it for the right deal and the right price, obviously enough, and it's better suited for what I'm going to do because it does have the smaller oil pan, the starter that's tucked up underneath here instead of sticking out, so the adapter plate will fit in a little bit smaller of a crankshaft. So, though I do appreciate you guys picking up the engine down there, unfortunately it will not be getting used on this project, so it'll be sitting out back and I'm sure I'll find another tractor to put it on or build a tractor with it at some point. So, the plan for this right now is we have to get this going and bench test it before it comes apart. I don't know how well it runs, if it runs, if it smokes or anything like that. I might have to pull the heads off to check the valves because I think they were a little sticky when I first rolled this over when I went to pick it up. I do have the 450 adapter plate also for this so I can go out of the transmission. And then once everything's running and checks out I have to disassemble this completely and pull the crankshaft out because this has to get turned down at the machine shop so that way you can accept the stepped gear for the 400 series Gravely transmissions. It would be nice to find a 450 Gravely crank in the meantime instead of having this one turn, but we'll see what happens. So anyways, let's get this carburetor split apart and take a look inside. Well, that's not good. It's got water sitting in it. So it's got a lot of that white crusty stuff. And it looks like the intake is full of grass and whatnot too. So, that means, unless I can get to the bolts underneath the intake manifold, I'm going to have to pull the exhaust off and pull the intake manifold off in order to get the carburetor off. Then we can run it through the glass bead blaster. Now, if the rest of them can do that, that would be nice. Unfortunately, someone's butchered this wiring harness, so I can't just disconnect it without cutting all the connections. I just assume leave them on there until I know if it works or not. But everything should be disconnected except for the points wire. And we can take the manifold off. Granted, this will be getting new gaskets when it all goes back together, but if I can save these for the test run, that would be best. Yeah, the carburetor ain't great, so that's going to have to get all cleaned out. 
get the water blown out of it, dry it out, and then I can run it through the glass bead blaster. And the valves, <laughs> well, they're probably definitely stuck because the two intake valves are wet. The exhaust one's got a little bit of rust, but yeah, you can see that. It's had moisture or water sitting in it for a while, so it definitely did have a sticky valve when I first turned it over. So I suppose the heads are going to come off from here, and we'll take a look underneath them. Oh, that's not good. It looks like we got water pooled up in the cylinder. Nice chunk of ice there. There you have it, folks. It doesn't look like it's been in there long. I'm sure the stuff that was in the carburetor has probably been in there since before I got it. But there's a pretty darn good chance that this stuff got in here when I power washed this thing about two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. I probably should have started in, started in on it then. Yeah, that should be all right. No heavy rust or anything like that. That'll clean up okay. All right, now we can pull the other side off and take a look at that one too. This one's got a lot more water in it. Pretty good sized chunk of ice too. You know, a fair amount of surface rust, but nothing that won't clean up. My biggest concern is all that stuff right there because the tops of these pistons are pretty well carboned up and I'm just hoping that this isn't a smoker but we'll find out soon enough I suppose so I'm gonna start scraping these out and see if I can get this engine to move because it is a little stuck from sitting with this water in it and get these cylinders cleaned up some and then if I can see about getting those valves to move and clean up the valve seats the best I can for the time being the other night I got the heads and cylinders and everything cleaned up. I did a redneck valve job on it quick, ran the wire brush around the underside of the valve and got the seats cleaned up enough where everything will seat nicely on it. After I cleaned off the top of the pistons, they have been bored. This engine was rebuilt. It was bored to 20 over at some point in time. I don't know if the valves were changed or not, but everything's back together. I used the old head gaskets because I don't have any extras here to put into it. <clears throat> if I roll this over, it does have pretty darn good compression now, so we'll see how that pans out when it comes time to start it. So, onto the carburetor now. I got all the water dried out of it, too, the other night. And you can see it's just a bunch of flaky, crusty white stuff in there, left over. Corrosion and old gas and stuff. So we'll blow that out in the glass bead blaster. The top half, I still have to pull the gasket off. I think that'll be okay. I am going to have to hand cut a new gasket for it. As you can see, this one has shrunk in on the sides and no longer fits on there. 
and then we just have to clean up our float a little bit and the carburetor should be ready to put back together. Carburetor's all bead blasted out and I got a new gasket made for it. So before I go to bolt it down to the manifold here, I wanted to show you guys this. This is why whenever you read carburetor adjustment instructions, they always tell you to turn in the needle until it seats and then back off set amount of turns. But the emphasis is on until it seats lightly because somebody had wound the idle needle in on this, as you can see, pretty darn hard because it sort of blistered the hole out to the inside of the carburetor a little bit. I don't know how well you can see it. But if you look really close, it actually tore some of the aluminum down the bottom of that hole because they wound it in so tight. So hopefully this will run okay at an idle. Like I said, it doesn't have to run long, just enough to make sure everything checks out and it can get it to warm up a little bit. But I do have another manifold and carburetor that the guy gave me when I picked up this engine. So when it comes time to formally rebuild this, when the engine crankshaft is done and it goes back together, I'll buy a new kit for it and I can either use this carburetor, the other one, uh, or obviously enough I'm going to have to use a different bowl and I can use a combination of parts from both of them. Well, as you can see, we have good spark. So I got my carburetor and my manifold all bolted back down. And obviously enough, I got my ignition system all squared away now. I just have it loosely hooked up to the battery charger to test everything out. I don't know if my charging system is good, obviously enough, until I hook it up. More than likely, what I'm going to do is get rid of the Onan charging system, put a different style coil on it, because this works in conjunction with this style charging system and just dumb it right down so it's nice and simple and parts are easy to find even though the original style owning coil is still good. So what I'm going to do is going to get this outside. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it onto the bench because there's really no good place for me to bolt this down. There's no ears or anything on the bottom of this pan or holes. There's just a couple of recessed spots on it, little feet, but nothing that I can bolt into. So I might take a chance and put it on a piece of plywood in the driveway and see if it'll fire up there. With any luck, hopefully it'll run smooth enough where it won't be bouncing all over the place. No smoke either, which is nice. So this couldn't have been rebuilt too long ago. It's got a little bit of a valve tick, but aside from that, everything sounds pretty smooth. Valves are going to get done anyways in this.
Well, it looks like we got ourselves a fine run and owning CCKA, folks. So the next step is here is we have to measure out this crankshaft and figure out where it's going to have to be cut and machined. So as you can see, I cleaned up my 450 adapter plate and I have that sitting on there. But before I can bolt that on, I have to grind down a couple of the fins over here on the side because they're sticking out just a little bit too far in order for this adapter plate to sit flush. So all I got to do is take those down within those margins, about a quarter of an inch, and the plate should sit on there real nice. And with a little bit of grinding, our adapter plate is sitting nice and flush on the back of the engine now. But I'm going to dock it there for now, folks. I'm going to see if I can keep the videos in this series down to a reasonable watch time so we don't get too long. There wasn't too much exciting going on in this one. The main focus was to just make sure I could get this Onan running and that everything checks out with it. And if it did, and since it has, I can keep going with the rest of the project and looking for parts. So in the meantime, I'm going to measure out the back of this crank in relation to the back of this plate and where the gear has to sit on this crankshaft when it gets machined. I'm also going to look around for about a week and make some calls and see if I can find somebody who has an Onan CCKA 450 crank from a Gravely because I'd much rather just pull this apart and swap in a 450 crank than have this good crank turned down. But worst comes to worst, I don't ha mind having the machine work done. So, And after that, once I get that squared away, I'm going to order all the gasket kits for this. I'm going to get a carburetor rebuild kit take care of the fuel pump I don't know if that works yet and then the next video we can start pulling this thing apart and get this crank separated that way you can go to the machine shop or swap in the 450 crank so anyways folks until next time there you have it